And I'm Mark Timbrook. I'm the channel marketing manager for BMD, and we're honored to have uh, so many of you join us today uh, from around the country. Uh, for, those of us, uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, BMD is a 100% employee-owned company. It's over 75 years old now, and it's great to have all of our divisions participating and represented here today. A um, couple of quick things before we get started. First of all, our webinars are recorded, uh, so you'll be able to um, see what we're talking about today at, at a later date if you need to or you want to share this with somebody else. And all those resources that we provide during these sessions will, will also be on the website as well, uh, so you'll have access to those. Um, this is, I think this is the sixth one in our series so far, maybe it's the fifth one. Um, we've, we've talked about uh, designing, building, and installing for large openings. Um, we've talked about modern trends. We have another one where we highlight some case studies where we're dealing with some specific and common challenges, uh, everything from new builds to remodels to even some commercial um, properties that we've done over the last few years. Um, a great episode on zero net energy um, with Ann Edminster, just an expert in the field and a wealth of resources. So if you're looking at um, building efficiencies and, and zero net energy in, in particular. Great explanations, great resources there. Next month, we'll be doing one on, uh, on the remodel, remodeling trends that are going on with this new world of um, building offices and homes and accommodating for, um, uh, for young students that are, that are at home and, and just the changes there. So uh, secondly, I just wanna uh, do a little housekeeping, just if you have any questions, you can ask them at any time. Just use the panel on the right and uh, address those questions to the panel. And we will address those at the end. Last uh, 10, 15 minutes or so, um, we'll be on together talking about that. So with that, let's, let's get started. We have uh, three spectacular guests with us today uh, with just a truckload of information um, and resources and tips for overcoming labor challenges, uh, which, which you know, hits everybody. We, we know this is a big issue. So um, Letitia Hankey will be with us, uh, is with us right now. Um, Jennifer Smith and Evian uh, Yuresti. And uh, welcome to all of you. And uh, thanks, thanks for being here. So let me give you a little background on, on everyone here. So let's start with uh, Letitia. She is the CEO of ARS Roofing and the president and foundation of the Lyme Foundation. She's from Lake County, California, been in the industry for 25 years next month. So Letitia, I don't know if anybody said it yet, but happy anniversary. Um, maybe I'm the first, I don't know. Uh, she started in 2004 with her own company that is now ARS Roofing and has built that up to 24 full-time year-round employees. She's been featured on Mike Rowe's uh, show, Return the Favor, which is really fun if you get a chance to watch that. Um, also, she's been on Emmy Award winning uh, Kelly Clarkson's show, and she's been named by Residential Roofer, or named Residential Roofer of the Year by Roofing Contractor Magazine, and started a remarkable organization, which she'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, called the Lyme Foundation. Uh, so I look forward to getting to that. Um, first, we're going to talk to a couple of marvelous people, uh, Evian Uresti and Jennifer Smith. Um, both are with BMD. Um, Evian is our talent acquisition business partner for BMD. I hope I got that right. <laughs> and she's been in uh, staffing for 20 years and focusing on creating efficiencies, labor marketing and metrics while recruiting across the nation for, for BMD now. Um, uh, Jennifer is the executive administrative assistant to the millwork division of BMD and she's got a background in higher education. Uh, which is great in our conversation. We'll, we'll talk about that. Well, um, 10 years of experience connecting with employers, supporting students, and uh, has organized many uh, career-related events. Uh, so some great insights we're going to get into. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump in with my conversation with uh, Jenny and Evian. Okay, we're going to start with Evian and Jenny, and I appreciate you guys coming on with us today. This is this is great. I think this is going to be a fun discussion. Um, you guys bring a lot of background in, in the HR industry, and so let's let's just jump right in and talk about the uh, the modern workforce. You know, how's it different now? What are the challenges in training and in finding skilled laborers and 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 artisans? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of students who are graduating high school are, are looking at other positions and roles in the IT world or things like that. And the modern workforce is definitely different from our previous workforces where people graduate high school and, and go into carpentry or construction. And those are really the employees that we're looking for. <laughs> so how to find that top talent and how to retain top talent against all the competition of high tech and <laughs> nice buildings, Google even. Um, that has been a challenge. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, th this is this is really a, a top um, topic right now. You see Mark Rowe putting out these things about, you know, really trying to drive the trades and and just getting um, the younger, this new generation to understand, look, there's there's opportunity here and it's not just a minimum wage job. There's actually career paths here. And so I see that's that's some of the things that you run into. Jenny, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I really think that there's not as much visibility out there for our upcoming candidates that we're seeking, the visibility of what it means to go down one of these kind of career paths and this pathway of carpentry and building and what does that mean? Um, you know, we often see, like Evan was referring to, that high tech computer science industry, which is great and we need that as well, but there's this gap you know, and, and you hear that a lot. There's this gap in this trade industry. And I think it's because there's a, a lack of visibility of what it really means to have a career in this particular trade. So what do you think? Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about the, the the trends and what's happening and what's projected. What I mean, what's going on with that right now? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely the awareness. I mean, people are going into high school and, and they're being educated about furthering their education. But the reality of that is, is that not everybody is a wanting to go to a four year college or take additional educational classes and, you know, have student loans or they can't afford it. And some people just need to actually work, whether it's to support their family or maybe they're just not interested. And I think um, that's something that definitely, Jenny, that you said that we need to focus on and educating them on what other opportunities they have other than just a traditional college um, pathway. But there are studies that are showing that in the next five years, as far as the, the skilled trades or artisans, that it's declining so much that we're not going to have people to do the carpentry work that we need mm -hmm. or the construction. So who's gonna build our buildings? So <laughs> what better way than to educate our current workforce and let them know, hey, there are other opportunities than going to college. Not that I want to, you know, not tell people to go to college because there are definitely benefits and factors that work into place there. But for those who aren't interested, I think by educating them and letting them know, hey, we have these opportunities in these programs that you can go learn these skills and join and have a really successful career move. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so Jenny, what about like high schools and colleges and trades? What are, what are some of the career pathways? I mean, are they developing these career pathways? Are there opportunities for them? Um, you know, what's going on in that? that realm. There really are. I mean, not only in just our local universities and college kind of in our area, which I know there's a lot of you um, here with us today who are at looking from other areas, but specifically here in the Central Valley of California, let me be more specific. Um, <laughs> there are, you know, internship programs, co-op programs that you can plug into and really help support your own career pathways for your business through these students and these potential candidates and really providing that as well. So I think it's really connecting with those universities and colleges um, as well as the local high schools to really build that pipeline, to really build that connectivity of the of the next generation of candidates. Right. Evian, thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that we've been to several different um, co-op opportunities or job fairs for our local colleges and um, even in those programs, a lot of students were really looking more towards um, carpentry, finished carpentry, or some type of position within these um, these industries that we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, very good. And and so, I guess the other thing is, how do you attract? So you 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 find a a, a pool of um, you know skilled laborers or artisans. Right. How do you attract them to your business? What what are your what are your recommendations or maybe maybe talk about Evian, what does BMD do? I mean, how does how does BMD and in our different divisions with Clearovations and Mole and Kansas City and and now 
um, Texas door and trim. I mean, how do we attract um, talent? Absolutely. So yes, now we have 18 different um, locations and we're growing. So um, ways that we are recruiting and attracting top talent is going through our total rewards package. So, I mean, we have things to offer as far as we're 100 percent employee owned. So we have our employee stock ownership program, which is an amazing way <laughs> to live life and have a retirement plan. Um, but we also have a matching 401k. And then um, our total rewards package also consists of a team incentive plan um, for certain positions. We have bonus plans. Um, and then we also have like an employee assistance plan, tuition reimbursement, a lot of different benefits that are beneficial to all employees, both professionally and personally. And I think having that, that um, oh, that balance <laughs> is also going to help attract and retain the top talent. A lot of the modern workforce is also looking for more flexible hours and schedules mm. and also remote working. So mm. based off position, those are also available um, positions that we have to offer that is attracting, you know, those positions and accounting or whatnot. Right, right. Jenny? I think that's it exactly. I think it's looking at that total package and marketing that. So um, again, my background was in that higher education realm. And so working with employers, it's really that understanding of what is the total package and knowing that going to career fairs or in, doing information sessions on campuses is really a long-term investment. You may not find an immediate response or an immediate group of pool of students, but the more exposure that you're giving your company on a campus, the more more of that peer-to-peer -peer experience. And once you get that amazing candidate, they've worked for you for through that internship or part-time or co-op or whatever that might look like for your company, they're going to go back and tell their friends. And then you have this amazing marketing campaign of a peer-to-peer, -peer, which is amazing and, and really the best kind, that word of mouth. But it's considering that long-term investment, that longevity of continually going and investing yourself on those college campuses, creating that branding and name to a generation that you know of candidates that might not even know you exist yeah well and that's that's a really good point i i know our audience is a real real mix um you know we, mm -hmm. we've got some larger firms we've got some real you know just uh just a family-owned business and they have a few extra employees so it's it, it's really a mix and so for them to you know maybe for the smaller ones it's harder to do things like that mm -hmm. um what are your thoughts on that i mean how how does a smaller business that's that's just run in full capacity and just barely has time to stay up with the projects, how do they reach out? Yeah, I think also with in investing in their employees. So I know other companies have these programs as well, but just BMD in particular. So if we have a student who goes through these um, training programs and they start on an intern or co-op opportunity, you know, that employee might look and say, hey, you know, I'm in finished carpentry or installing, but I want to do more. So if they're working for us and then they're taking classes and we help with that tuition reimbursement program, we're investing in this employee, helping them achieve their career goals. And I think that's what really helps retain these employees by showing them that, hey, we care. <laughs> We're all employee owners here. How are we going to help each other? And I think that environment is going to help the employee grow in their career and educational goals and also help us fulfill our roles that we have available. Right, right. right. Yeah, and I think, you know, you go ahead, Jenny, go ahead. I was I was going to say plug in with a local community college or local university. Mm -hmm. Their career centers are there to support you, too. So there's people working on that career center side to help support, you know, the smaller businesses who maybe don't have the full capacity. But the more you talk to them and the more you express your values in that full package, they're going to represent that to their students as well. So, you know, it takes a 20 minute phone call to plug in with, a, you know, a career center at a local community college or university and that can also be a great tool to invest in that generation of candidates yeah yeah and that's you, you touch on that um that you know universities want to place their students right mm -hmm. they're it's a very big incentive for them to find a job when you leave college you know when, when right. or or you know even if it's if it's a two-year program or even the trade schools they're mm -hmm. They want that success. So I think that's a great point. The tapping into those, they're going to be hungry and they're going to want to right. help you out. So right. th that's a really good point, too. Um, but, but Evian, you touched on, you know, retaining the talent. And, mm -hmm. 
and just making sure, you know, <laughs> you find somebody good, how do you keep them? So right. what other things um, that, uh, have you guys seen that works um, in this industry? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it honestly depends on the person for retention. What What is that person looking for and can, and can we make that match? But right. um, I think BMD does a great job at looking at that retention in terms of really the employee ownership, right? We all have an investment. We all want to see um, you know, the company succeed. So, well, and, and, and I've been deeply involved with the ESOP organization, which is the employee stock ownership program. Did I say that right? Yeah. You, you, okay, good. <laughs> but they, um, you know, that's one thing they talk about that even smaller business can, can do some kind of employee ownership program. And I can tell you from my personal perspective, that was one thing when, uh, when I was recruited to work for BMD, that, that was a big, big deal yeah. because now you're, you really, re, you really feel like you're part of the business and, and it doesn't have to be, and it, you know, I think the misnomer is, you know, because we have employee owners, they all of a sudden rule all the decisions, but that's not the model, right, Evian? It's, right. it's, it's, more it's, of a it's sense of inclusion. Right. You know, you, we feel that we belong here and we're all one. And so we all work with each other to achieve our goals and to make sure the company is successful. And I think having a part of that and I think with other employees and us being employee owned, we're all responsible for our success, for our growth. And with our growth comes mm -hmm. more opportunities for us and growth for ourselves, if that's what we choose. And I think that's how we're going to retain people. Yeah, I, I think that's been an extra excellent tool for us and we've seen a lot of success for that with that across the board um so just just real quick some final thoughts on you know we talked about resumes a little bit we talked about job descriptions and how how that impacts and and you know i, I know evian you've got some thoughts on resumes and um that that aren't always shared but i think it's a a very valid point so talk about that a little bit about the importance of resumes or you know importance of looking at the the entire um, picture rather than just the paper. Absolutely. So definitely with resumes, we want to make sure it's free of spelling errors, that it makes sense, that it's up to date. Um, those are the first initial things that people are going to see. So if you haven't updated your resume from 2019 and you're applying to a job in 2021, what have you been doing for two to three years? So if I have five people who have that updated information, I'm going to call them before I call this other person and have to find and locate and, and things like that for a resume. Now, that being said, okay, it's statistically proven that within the first 30 seconds, people will glance at that resume and determine if they want to move forward or not. A lot of people do that. I know a lot of people who do that. However, if we're looking to people who are fresh out of school, high school in mm -hmm. particular, are we not going to call and coach and use that opportunity to let them know, hey, you know, if you update your resume to the fullest potential, right, and then you come in for your interview and you have that confidence, I mean, that's a teaching point that we can assist mm -hmm. with, especially right. when they're coming out of high school, we have these programs in place, these career pathways, right? Um, so there's that. But then if I'm looking for somebody who is an installer or a service technician, and maybe their resume isn't flawless or it doesn't truly depict what they've done for a living or the specifics on carpentry or trim carpentry, right? I'm not just going to throw that person resume away and move on. I'm going to see is there potential there and start with my phone interview. So though it's important to have a super great, amazing looking resume, because that is your first impression, um, I think it's super important to see the potential of what they've been doing and then maybe have that conversation in your interview process and ask them, okay, so elaborate. Maybe they just don't know or have the skills to write this amazing <laughs> resume to use. You know, there's, there's more to what we need employees to do in our skilled trades than whether or not the resume is perfect and flawless. Yeah, and I think that's an important point from the hiring aspect to that it's like you know take a little time to to find out you know okay the paper's got some of the basics right. but find out the person and and take that that short phone interview is that what you're saying maybe that phone interview is a is a great little filter tool to to say oh wow you know did i find a diamond in the rough and and right. at, at this level you know when you've got somebody coming out of high school or maybe out of a trade school or college you know that there may be a lot of diamonds in the rough you don't know right. 
So. A quick phone screen will solve that, but it's just like with most recruiters, and, and I think this is most recruiters, that when you go places, you're constantly meeting people and speaking to them. And I know I've gone to several different places, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatnot. And if I meet somebody who is just their customer service skills is amazing, they did great at trimming the wood that I'm needing to pick up for my fence or whatnot, and it's like, you know what? There's potential there. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's a walking interview, no matter where I go, I'm going to meet somebody. So I think there's just, there's a few things other than the resume that can help us find the right talent. And yeah. again, it goes back to educating people on what else is out there. Well, so Jenny, talk about the job description side. So as employers, as we're hiring, um, right. how mm -hmm. important is that job description to finding the right person? Yeah, it's very important because we're teaching students to use that job description as the baseline to write their resume. So if your job description doesn't actually match what you want this candidate to do, so if you, the candidate is supposed to do A, B, and C, but your job description doesn't say that, you're not going to see a resume that gives you the actual attainable ABC because it wasn't in the job description. Right. So really making sure that your expectations for this job and role really meet that job description so that the candidate can see it. And I think it comes to whether you're the one writing the job description or if you're using a third party service, making sure that there's not a disconnect there and that that's being reviewed to ensure that you're getting the best candidate, not only on paper through a resume, but also through the phone interview process because mm -hmm. a candidate's gonna come in to the phone interview thinking that you're gonna ask them questions based on this job description, but you're actually asking them questions from over here and that can be mind boggling for a very stressed out candidate, right? Who's very nervous about talking to you and doesn't realize right. that they're interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them. And so yeah. it's really taking that in, in, in full, you know, and what does that really look like? And I think step one in that baseline is that job description. What is it that you're really looking for? And how can you demonstrate that to a pool of candidates who would soon to be applying? Yeah, so so you would say spend some time on that job description. Yeah. Don't just don't just throw together a couple of sentences and feel like you're feeling filling out a classified ad. This is right. this is something that's that brings out the right talent at the right time. That's that's right. an excellent point. That's really good. So, um, so the next question is where to find talent, right? And uh, you know we we've talked about some resources, but. Um, we've got Letitia coming on next. Um, she's got some some great resources, not just in California. She's expanded across the country. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk to her next. But this was just great. This was a great conversation. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I know it's a a different environment. This is something um, we're not all used to, but I think this is valuable information. And hopefully, we've given some people some little nuggets to think about and things to to look for as they're as they're trying to work. Uh, work their businesses and find find good people. So appreciate both of your time. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Now we're here with Letitia Hankey. And Letitia, it's just great to have you on here. This is, you know, I I, I think about you being with Mike Rowe and Kelly Clarkson and then it's little old me. So this is this is just an honor. <laughs> But it's it, I, I've heard your story and we've talked and, you know, you just bring so much to this table that I, I'm looking forward to hearing about and people don't want to hear me talk. So I'm just going to turn it over to you and just let you go. Uh, th thank you so much. I'm, I'm really happy to be here as well. This is a great opportunity to just talk about how people can um, help this workforce issue that, you know, we're all having. Um, and so I, I have a small presentation that I'm just going to go through and then, you know, I'll come back and answer any questions that you may have. I love questions, so please write them down if you have them because I would love to get them answered. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly here. All right, so I'm, of course, you already heard my name, Letitia Hankey. So I am the CEO of ARIS Roofing, Gutters, and Solar um, out of Santa Rosa, California, and I service Sonoma, Marin counties. I've been in the construction industry now for almost 25 years. Uh, I don't know how that's possible. I'm only 25, but you know, anyway. Um, so, you know, today I just really wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the issues that I've had in the workforce and um, kind of go over some of the things that could maybe help you guys make a difference. And hopefully you get a little bit out of this presentation. So I have been in the industry, like I said, about 25 years and about maybe almost 10 years ago, I just started having a huge struggle and getting 
Um, anyone who wants to be a roofer to, you know, come work for me. You know, we had great benefits and great opportunities, but no one wanted to actually come. And we just really struggled with it. And I got together with a lot of my other contractors and they pretty much said the same exact things that, you know, was going on with me. So we had a conversation. I sat down with about 14 contractors. These are painters, electricians, you know, all, all types of trades. And we started talking about what are the labor challenges that we're having and, you know, what's the solution? How can we fix it? You know, what are the, what are the op options that we have? And, you know, there were a lot of answers to that question, right? But I narrowed it down today to, you know, the four answers that pretty much all of us as, you know, the group of 14 of us had. So I narrowed it down to the four. The first one is seasoned employees come with baggage. This, these were their exact words, just so you know, okay? I'll talk about that in a minute. Young people lack training. And yeah, that is true, but what do we do about that, right? Employees are retiring. They're retiring out. I'm sure you guys can you know, relate to that one. And then lastly, uh, you know, I can't afford benefits. Many of the contractors like, you know, I can't afford medical insurance and such. So I'm going to tackle those. Uh, we'll start with seasoned employees come with baggage. So what does that mean? Now, I know some of you probably already know what that means, but I'm just going to say it. Yes, the Mr. Know-it-all. Yes, we have contractors that are seasoned. They've been in the industry 15, 20 years. They know everything. You can't train them. You can't teach them a single thing. They come with bad habits from the companies that they used to work for. Um, that is an issue, issue because we actually need seasoned employees so that way we can build an additional crew. So how do we fix that? I think I have a solution for that. Young people lack training. So the, the bigger question of this is, are we willing to train? Because yes, an 18 year old just coming out of high school has probably been playing video games. I'm speaking about my son, by the way, been playing video games, you know, not necessarily wanting to work with, you know, his hands. Um, so how do we get young people actually interested in this construction trades? Maybe it's because they don't really know that they have that opportunity. So the question is, are we willing to train them? Can't afford benefits. Yeah, that is true. I mean, you think about a company that may only have three employees versus someone who has 25 like myself or others that have 50 or more. Benefits are really, really expensive, especially for medical, you know, get, having any kind of medical. But what I've done in my company, and that's what I want to go over with you today, I've implemented other things that have made it very valuable to work at my company. So the first thing is employee appreciation events. This is something that you can simply do. Now, before COVID, we used to have all of our events in person every quarter. Uh, we would do, you know, summer camping trips. We'd go bowling. Oh, bowling night was just a blast. You know, all the families would come. Uh, we'd have bowling nights and competitions. Um, we do a holiday party every year and at different locations and, you know, where the whole family can come. And sometimes we just do a dinner with just the crews. We did a, a pizza pizza party thing where we got to bake pizzas. It just, there's so many different little things that we can do to just show appreciation to your employees and get to know them a little better. Employee recognition. So I do a program. So if, I'm sure some of you guys have issues with uh, employees not showing up to work. Maybe they're sick. So I do an employee recognition where if they don't miss work um, for a quarter, they get a $200 bonus. Now I know you're supposed to come to work, right? But we all know that there's an issue, that they're not showing up, their their stomach's hurting, they have a headache. I guess that's why Tylenol and Pepto-Bismol exist. But anyway, um, that is an issue. So after a year, if they haven't missed work the whole year, in January, they get a $1,000 bonus. And so what I learned over the years is that um, I've, I have more and more employees not missing work to get that thousand dollar bonus. And it's worth it to me to pay that bonus to make sure that I have my all my crews on site and it helps with production of jobs as well. Aflac insurance, there's different insurance opportunities that that is very uh, that's not very expensive. There's we have dental vision and an accident plan through Af Aflac and 
that is a really great opportunity for you that if you want to have some kind of value, you can look into their dental plan because it's really like $26, $30 a person and it makes the employee feel really appreciated. And I, I remember their faces when I announced to them that we were going to have dental insurance. They were just so excited about that. So uh, just know that there's opportunities and I have really great connections if you need someone really good to tell you more about that. Holiday bonuses, I was really shocked to learn when the, when I would get together with my contractors that they don't give, you know, holiday bonuses, even if it's $25 gift card or something. Um, this is something that you can really implement, you know, right away, you really at the end of the, the year, you can get them some type of holiday bonus. And I can't even tell you how much they'll appreciate that and realize how special that is, being that not a lot of companies do it retirement i do an um ira for my for my employees for their retirement and i match it at three percent and you know there's a tax benefit to that as well so there's a benefit for everybody and it helps your employees save up a little money for their retirement and i have good people to talk to if you don't have anyone and then lastly, just treating your employees with respect. You know, you say I can't afford a benefits. Well, this is something that you don't have to pay for. You know, when I say that, it, it means, you know, I know all my employees. Not only do I know their names, <laughs> of course, but I know their kids' names and I know their wives' names. And, you know, I treat them with respect. And many of my employees that have come to work for, for me over the last 10 years, most of them say they heard through the grapevine how I treat my staff. And I have a very, very low turnover. So those are a couple of things that you can think about. And then lastly, employees are retiring out. Yes, they are. And we know that this is in the statistics that baby boomer generation is retiring and the lack of young people to replace them really, really exists. There's an estimated 3 million trades jobs remaining vacant right now. And you know why? It's basically because the young people don't know. They simply don't know that they have the opportunity to go into a trade or be in a trade because in high school, they're not taught that. They're taught, go to college. I mean, I'm sure their parents, think about your parents, you know, they probably said, you gotta go to college. You go to college and then you go to college for four to five years, you're now in debt, you graduated and still don't know what you wanna do, right? That was kind of me. And the thing is, is that there's other opportunities for them. So I decided once I gathered all this information from my contractors, I told them, I said, if I started a program, would you guys be a part of it and help me out? And all of them said yes. So I started a nonprofit called the Lime Foundation. And I always like to get this out the way immediately. This, this program is not about lemons. It's not about limes or anything like that. It's actually my son's name spelled backwards. His name is Amel and Lime spelled backwards. He used to be teased and called Lime. Um, so I called my nonprofit Lime Foundation and my son is 18. And when he was 15 years old, he made the decision that he wanted to get into the construction trades. He says, mom, I want to be a construction manager. So he started his own handyman service at 15 years old, saved up his money at 16 and a half, bought himself a car. And now he's saving his money to buy himself a condo. So if young people don't know that they can make great money and have a great career in construction, then that means that we need to teach them. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that now. So tiny little explanation about Line Foundation is a roofing and construction vocational program called the Next Gen Trades Academy. That's one of our main programs that we do. I also have a program called the Turner Arts Initiative. Turner's my maiden name. And that is a music recording arts, performing arts, creative arts program. And it's a camp for our disadvantaged youth. And then we also have a senior activity program and that was designed for our seniors over 55, seniors and veterans that are looking to be a little healthier and we have a nutrition and exercise program for them. So that's the Lyme Foundation as a whole, but today we get to talk about the Next Gen Trades Academy because it's my favorite. So this is our academy. And, um, you know, again, when I talked to my contractors about what we can do, right, I said, how about we train them? Are you guys willing to take that extra time to do the training? And they said, yes, let's do this. So this, we put together a curriculum for this academy. And this is the curriculum. 
we do a 10 week program when we do them in person. Right now we're just doing them by Zoom uh, because we had to pivot ourselves once COVID hit last year. We were right in the middle of a class and we pivoted the class and turned it into a Zoom class to finish it out. And now we've done another four Zoom classes. We've had the same results of getting our students hired uh, once they graduate from the program. So we are gonna continue the Zoom program, but. 2022 will be back to doing them in person. So these are all the different trades that we go over with them. We do of course, basic construction background. We do safety and OSHA, which is very important to all of, the, to all of us, right? And the trades is, um, and then we also talk about all these different trades. We bring in local contractors in the area to speak to them about the trades. These are all contractors that are usually hiring or they want to be mentors. And they basically just tell their stories of how they got into the trades. I mean, I'm a musician, so I didn't get into the trades because I wanted to. I got in because I was broke in college and I needed a job. And I started working for a roofing company when I was 19. And that was 25 years ago. And so now I'm just giving that same opportunity to our young people as well. And so it, it's not just about trades, right? The, we need to do this as a whole. And there were a lot of things that I didn't know when I was 18 and 19 years old. And we all deal with a lot of stress and issues, especially our young people these days. So in our workshops, in our in our Trades Academy, we actually do different workshops. Uh, one is in emotional intelligence and stress management. We talk to them about how to deal with everyday life stress. So that way they're not bringing it to work, you know, every day, how to be able to separate and how to actually deal with it. We bring in professionals for the interview and public speaking skills so that way they know how to have good eye contact when they're interviewing with you. And, you know, they're doing these in Zoom interviews now, too. Right. So you got to look at a, you know, a camera. And so we're teaching them how to be able to do that and be very successful. We do a resume and cover letter writing so that way they, they don't have a five page resume because, you know, if, if we all get a bunch of resumes, we can't look at that many resumes before our eyes start bulging out of our heads. So we teach them how to have a nice, coherent uh, resume for you to read and go through. Financial literacy is definitely one of our biggest workshops that we do, because, you know, when I was 18 in college, first starting off, I got that American Express card in the mail and I went buck wild. I bought shoes and purses and, and ran that card up, not realizing, oh yeah, I have to pay it back. <laughs> so we actually bring in professionals. We bring in um, uh, different banks, local banks. We bring in Edward Jones, different financial institutions that talk to them about how to have good credit. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys know now, you know, in our older ages, how important good credit is. It follows you the rest of your life. When you want to buy a house, when you want to buy a business, when you want to buy a car. So we actually teach them that in the financial literacy and try to help set them up for better financial stability. We do a personal growth workshop. So that way they're working in teams and learning how to build each other up. And we also do health and nutrition in the class. We bring in a nutritionist to talk to our young people about the importance of not drinking a bunch of Red Bulls every day and Doritos for their lunch. And because overall brain health and body health is important, especially when you're in the traits, you know, especially a heavy duty training like roofing or general contracting, you need to make sure you're in good, in good health. So those are our workshops. And then I just wanted to show you a little bit about our training. Um, these are, of course, our classes that we did in person. We're not doing in-person classes anymore right now, not until 2022. But we do a lot of training where our students can kind of get a real life feel of you know, what they're doing. So this is a restoration week where they get to dress up in a full hazmat suit. And if you're at all familiar with restoration companies, they deal with a lot of mold, mildew, um, uh, you know, fire damage, water damage, but they also deal with hoarders. So uh, we try to make it fun in our class. So we do this hoarder game where we kind of set up like a wrestling ring and we have them come in and try to look for like these little pieces of paper. And it's hard to find because there's all this stuff. And so we just try to set up real life situations for them and make it very fun. Other training activities, we build solar kits uh, during our solar week. We do a solar lesson and then we have them build their kits from scratch and as a team and again it's just again another team building exercise because when they're working for us in the trades a lot of times they're going to be working on a team um, and then we all also want to see you know how well they do with just following directions right because that's also a very important thing when you're hiring and then if you see that giant jenga right there in the middle that's during our architectural engineering week 
And basically Giant Jenga, if you've ever played it, um, it's really about having a good solid foundation, right? I mean, you pull the wrong block and it's all gonna come crashing down. And so it's just one of those le lessons where they could be a little more involved in understanding um, the importance of you know, architecture, or, uh, architecture and, stru and structural. So it's a lot of fun actually. They get their OSHA 10 certifications. They do a 10 hour certification. They actually do not graduate from our program until they've completed their certification. So that's a requirement of our program because all of the contractors also mentioned that safety was very important to them. Our workers comp rates are crazy, especially in roofing. And so um, they get certif certified and all of our students that have graduated from our program are certified. And we've had 123 students graduate so far. And then they get tools. So you all know how much tools are. And young people that are just starting off in construction, they don't have an extra $500 and $700 to buy their tools. And you also know that they need tools to, you know, to work on a lot of our uh, trades jobs. So uh, we have a program that actually gives our student tools. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. And then we have a graduation for them. You know, it's a great chance for them to meet. Uh, this last year, we've had to have our graduations virtually, of course. We've had them um, uh, drive-by graduations, but we made it happen. So that's what matters the most. And that's when they get their hard hats saying that they completed and their plaques. So they can be really proud that they actually completed this program. So I wanted to show you a little bit about our tiny home project because sometimes our students aren't quite ready for um, you know being out in the field with contractors. So what we do is we put them on our tiny home project so that way they get um, good hands-on, uh, especially ones that have never held a hammer before. We give them a chance to get trained kind of one-on-one. -on -one. We usually put about five to six students at a time on the projects and then they get to learn a little bit more detail on the building and get a chance to kind of do it on their own. And then that preps them for when they're ready to go and get their jobs in the real life. So, you know, usually we can recognize some of the students that need that little extra. So those are the ones that we put over on the tiny home. Uh, we are hoping to finish, uh, go back to that program very soon, hopefully in the next six months. So let me tell you a little bit of how we got our tools because I'm really excited about it. Um, Mike Rowe has, um, if you know Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs or any of his other shows, he also has a show on Facebook Watch called Returning the Favor. And about a year ago, so this was uh, February 2020, uh, right before we all went to shelter in place. And Mike Rowe came on and he uh, surprised me basically. And I was on, ended up being on his show and he gave us all of those tools. He gave us enough tools for over a hundred of our graduates. So we've been able to give so far 63 of our graduates uh, tools for them. And then we'll be looking for long-term opportunities to be able to continue that tool program because we've seen how much it's really helped them. He also gave us a grant so that way we can continue doing two more cohorts of our classes. So it was a really great, if you can't tell by my face, um, it was a big surprise. Um, and then we also had the honor of going on the Kelly Clarkson show. She had heard about my Lion Foundation, wanted to you know, have us on the show just for our Next Gen Trades Academy. But then at the last minute, she wanted to bring on some of my students and graduates from our other programs as well. So we had the great fun of going on her show. And, you know, it was during COVID time. So I, we couldn't fly to LA. We just went ahead and did it on her um, virtual show, but it was still just as much fun. It was a blast. So lastly, oh, well, what can I do to help? Well, I am so glad you guys asked that question. So there's a few things, a couple things you can do, right? One is just check for your local programs. There are actual training programs most likely in your area and you just don't know about it. Number one, if there are junior colleges around, um, I know here in the Santa Rosa area, our junior college not only has a roofing training program, but they also have a construction training program. There are also some local high schools that have a CTE, career technical um, program, in their actual high schools. So it just takes you doing a little bit of research, uh, maybe even making a couple phone calls, and you'll be able to probably find that there are young people that actually do want to be in the trades. They just simply didn't know about the opportunities. Um, you can start your own program. Yes, you could do your own if you wanted to. I mean, maybe you have that desire to like I did, you know, to just do a little more because, you know, 
yes, I can donate to this and that, but I really wanted to be able to do something I could be really proud of. And I can tell you right now, there's nothing more special than having, you know, a student who was on probation, who changed his life around and has now been working for Tesla for the last two years now. You know, um, it means so much to really have um, that type of thing happen to you. So, and, you know, say you don't want to do any of those things. Hey, you can call me. You know, I'm always looking for opportunities to bring our program to different locations. And you can contact me at my email there and my uh, website is also there. And that way you can look and see how you can bring it to your location. And I'm always ready to have a conversation about that because I know there's so many more young people out there that really, really, really do need our program. So I want to say thank you guys so much for um, listening to me and you know, I very much look forward to answering any of your questions. So thank you so much. Yeah, Letitia, that's just great. I really appreciate you coming on. This has been fantastic. I love the practicality of what you bring. The Lime Foundation is just an incredible story and to watch it grow. And, uh, and you know, we've got an audience that that's spread out of the country, it's spread all over the country. We've got, you know, Texas, Kansas City, Iowa, Colorado, New Mexico, and of course, California. And so, you know, it's it's good to see, you know, how you can reach out to those areas too. But but let's do that. Let's bring back Jenny and Evian, and uh, we'll just start answering questions. Uh, I know we've got some already, so uh, we'll we'll jump back into that now. Okay. All right. So we're going to bring everybody back in here. Um, technical difficulties aside, so um, I guess uh, we'll make sure all our panelists unmute themselves. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Dalila, who's going to address some of the questions we've been getting throughout the uh, the session here. So, Dalila, it's all yours. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, first question was um, for Jenny Avin. Um, are there new, any new recruiting techniques or activities that are proving to be more successful in the new environment without in-person job fairs? I can answer that one. So um, a lot of universities and community colleges are doing virtual type events and we've actually seen more students attend virtually than we have um, when we've been in person. I think for a lot of students, the ability to just quickly hop on their computer and be able to talk to employer has pro proven to be a, a more successful opportunity for them than actually having to be in person and get all dressed up and fully prepared. Um, so we've actually seen more success in, in a lot of ways with our virtual type events. No, that's really great. Thanks, Jenny. Um, and then for all three of you, and I know Letitia, you touched a little bit on this. Um, how can we counter negative publicity or lack of publicity for careers in this industry? Oh, yeah, negative publicity. I, I have to mention this and I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. When I talk to my students, every class, I ask them, you know, what is the first thing you think of when you think of a plumber, you know, in, in the construction industry? And you can take a guess what their answer is, is plumbers crack. And that is, the, I'm sorry, I, I apologize in advance. That we That is the problem with construction trades and in this type of trade is that they, that's what they think of. And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to fight, you know, that it's not about that. Plumbers make $150,000 a year or more, right? So it's really just about getting that education into these young people and help them to understand that there's a lot more um, to the trade. So I think it's just our responsibility of, of making sure they're educated about it. So, sorry. No, that's great. That's a great um, answer. And yeah, we did have um, a gentleman. He just asked, well, what can um, what can he do as an employee in this ind industry to nurture his own talent? Um, what is um, anything that you guys can think of that can nurture your own employee talent to keep them in this industry if they're just starting off? I think investing in our this will help with that, you know, showing them other opportunities and how they can progress in the role that they're in. And I think that's key to retaining our employees <laughs> um, and also, you know, showing that we support them as well, because they're they're helping us grow our business. So we should help them succeed in it, you know. Well, and, and Letitia, yeah. I got I to gotta say, I love what you said about getting to know your employees, not just them, but you get to know their families. and. And when you feel a part of a company like that, you feel like there is that connection there. You know, you wanna you wanna do more. You wanna step up. And you know, and for us, an employee-owned company, I wanna do more because 
you know, I'm directly benefiting from our growth. So, you know, anything I can do. So there's, there's things like that too. Yeah, I agree because, you know, mo all of my employees have my cell phone number directly. You know, they can contact me directly. Um, and, and yeah, knowing their family and knowing their names, you know, knowing their, their kids, that really does make a difference. They know that you're actually invested in them more than they're not just employees. My employees know that they're my family. And so sometimes it's just a little extra time taken with them. Ask them how they're doing. Even just asking how they're doing um, really makes a difference. They know that you're really caring about them. So retaining employees is really, I have very low uh, turnover and I really, and I listed a few things. Um, those employee appreciation days that I do, those are the times that we really get to know each other on a more personal level. level. And I can still be boss because I'm still their boss, but at the same time, um, they know that, you know, we can work together and we're on the same level in so many ways. Great, we have another question um, that just came in. Um, how important is a good company website to a candidate? Very important. <laughs> it really is. You're gonna use that for research. They're gonna look at what's your investment with your employees? What do you have as a full package? So I think a good company website is very important. Um, looking at the full picture in terms of recruiting, um, it's kind of that baseline for a lot of employees. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Letitia. We did have one more question. Um, it, Jenny, you had mentioned about reaching out to trade school positions. Um, if you, you know, if you're looking for employees, um, so what departments would that be? Could you just recap where they could um, call in to uh, to tell them they have an open position? Yeah, most of those are going to be their career centers or some form of that. CTE is another one, depending on within their trade areas as well. But most of them are going to be listed under um, their career centers, um, career resource centers. All have different names, but all very much the same functionality within that. Um, and they have staff who support um, either different areas. I mean, it, literally a 20 minute call can get you um, so much more exposure than if you had made that call at all. And Letitia, your trade school does that as well. You could just call in and, and say, you know, we have these open positions. Yeah, so we um, they can give us a call. They let us know what's open and available, and then we can let them know at that point who we have uh, available to. Um, usually we have multiple candidates that will be able to apply for them. And it's for pretty much all trade positions. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I think that's all the questions that we have, Mark. So the one thing I wanted to revisit Letitia is a little bit about, you know, you, you talked about going to Zoom this year and, you know, how you've, you've done the courses on that. And, uh, um, you know, it, it, like I, I said, you know, we've got several other um, states represented here and um, love to see, you know, how that develops and what the opportunities are. Of course, there's nothing like a hands-on thing, but, you know, are, are there anything that, that we can do to, to spread the word, to get you uh, out into these other areas? Um, doing virtual or even even starting other things. I know you mentioned, hey, one of the things you could do is start your own program. Well, can they partner with you? Are there ways for them to, to partner with you on that? Yeah, we're always looking for new contractors to come on board because the nice thing is about they know other contractors. So to get into your area, basically we start with about 11 different trades. So all we need is, you know, access to that many trades people. And then we can start the conversation about bringing the program virtually. It'd be great to do it in person, but unfortunately I can't fly around the United States, you know, but, um, you know, virtually it's easy to bring that program. And because we've seen the same results virtual as in person, we're just going to keep doing it virtually for as long as we can and, um, and helping these contractors because it's a mutual uh, it mutually helps the contractor and, of course, um, the graduate and the student. So it's um, that's how we're going to continue it for now. We did just get another question. Um, does it cost to join the program? Me? 
Yes, sorry, Letitia. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's free. It's free for students. So we usually get local grants. So wherever your area is located, we usually get um, look for different grants that are available for workforce development. So it's free for the students ages 16 and 24 to do the program. And it's also free for the contractor to be a part of the program as well. And you basically as a contractor or as a tradesperson come in as a mentor and actually speak to the students. So there's no cost if we can uh, get all that local funding. So it works out really great. That's a great question. All right. So Dalila, did we did we get through all the all the questions we had for now? Yeah, we did. Okay, great. Uh, fantastic time. This is this is great. And uh, we'll have this recorded so you can go to the website. You'll get an email um, if you're registered, and uh, it'll give you that that link. Um, uh, but we'll have all the resources there and uh, this is just a great conversation and obviously something that's on uh, everybody's mind right now and trying to to work through this and figure out how to keep the businesses moving so uh, appreciate everybody's time and just uh thank you